Hey bag maker, I'm Sarah Lawson from Soul Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us for the show. As you can see by the empty chair, Danny will be joining me on set in just a minute. Um, today I spent a good part of the day puppy proofing my sewing room. So all of the rest of the rooms in the house are pretty organized as far as things not lying around that a puppy could get to or chew. And I realized the other day um, when my puppy was um, kind of settling in, I was answering a few emails in the sewing room on my computer and I gave him a like a dried sweet potato chew. Basically it's a, just like a cut piece of a sweet potato and he was chewing it. I had piles of fabric on the floor and he kept um, moving over to different piles to chew his chew on top of the fabric. So um, that made me realize I'd better get on track with the rest of the house and get the sewing room organized. Uh, so I started working on that today. So my goal was basically to get everything up off the floor. He's pretty good. He doesn't jump on counters, knock on wood at least yet. And so um, I got about 80% of the things off the floor. So I feel like I'm in good shape. Um, however, <laughs> a lot of the things that were on the floor have been transferred to my desk, my ironing board, my extra table. So I've got to take care of those things next. But uh, the main goal of getting things off the floor is pretty much in hand. So um, we have Bag Lab tonight. Hello, Danny. Hey, everyone. And we filmed the demonstration for Bag Lab earlier this evening. And I don't know what happened, but for a 10 minute demonstration, um, I had loads of mistakes. Danny even started editing the video for Bag Lab. And oh, I finished editing it. He finished editing the video, and then I told him, Danny, we have to redo it because um, it's not right. <laughs> so he very graciously, he didn't make me feel bad. He said, it's okay, everyone makes mistakes, which was really nice of him. But um, we got it taken care of for the show, and I'm just a little bit rusty from filming, and um, normally I can just... Thank goodness we weren't doing it live, but normally I can just pick up with the video and run through it and not the case for today, but it did, it sure did feel good uh, filming a video, even though it was a tutorial, not a full bag pattern video, but that sure felt great. Wanda on Instagram, <clears throat> Sarah posted a picture of Mikey, our poodle puppy. Even if you don't have an Instagram account, you can still, <clears throat> with your web browser, see my Instagram, which... The web address is instagram.com backslash so sweetness. Uh, it was a few days ago, but we I posted a picture of Mikey there so you can see his little picture. We'll try to get some pictures in future on the show. Cindy says, has the puppy seen your dragon? Actually, the dog is not allowed on the second floor where our bedrooms are and 100% for sure not allowed in my bedroom where my bearded dragon is. Um, not because my bearded dragon would hurt the puppy, but I actually don't want my dog to hurt the bearded dragon. And so she's just, my bearded dragon has a lot of free roam time when I'm in the room and she, she's used to coming out and I just want her to still feel secure and kind of know that that's still her personal space. So the dog basically has the rest of the house, just not the bedrooms. Um, let's see, Teresa says, Danny, does the playback speed on YouTube affect a live show too? That is negative, it will not, because we're, it doesn't have like a preloaded cache that it could speed up. Hmm. I also like to watch certain videos at one and a half speeds, um, because I like to get more content in a short amount of time I have. And I, I love these nice comments. So basically, if she wants to watch at a different speed, she not has to watch. Live. Not during live. Not during live. Danny's such a good guy. Danny's a sweetheart. Man, you guys are so awesome. <laughs> Sometimes you guys are nicer than my wife to me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Patricia says, Danny, what happened? Your shirt is boring, not like usual. Um, I need to wash some clothes. <laughs> wash and or fold some clothes. <laughs> okay, so um, if it's okay, we'll start off with your pick of the week. Sure. My pick of the week is from Kristen. She made, this was actually an Irish... Uh, Dancing. Dancing dress. Mm -hmm. um, and she turned into a park sling bag. And if you look, that looks all, that is actually all applique on. I think the last picture, you can really see it better. 
Uh, but I saw the original dress. I didn't post the original dress picture because it was of a child. And we don't want to post any pictures of anyone's children without consent. Um, but she did an amazing job. It looked super, as you can see right there, the detail into that. It, it's I love the bright colors. It just looked awesome. I like the interior fabric, the little like lucky mm -hmm. yeah, um, shamrocks. Too. Very cool. So awesome job, Kristen. What a great way to use another item and just continue on having that memory when you use the backpack. So I know someone who made a quilt into a dress. Yeah, I've done Similar that. Similar but different. I've done that a few times, but yeah. Um, let's see. All right, so um, the Bag Lab question for tonight, and by the way, Bag Lab is generally on the shows when Danny's on the shows with me, so every other Sunday. Um, and if you're interested in submitting a question to Bag Lab that I can possibly answer in a future show, all the information for submissions is in the description. It's kind of a long description, but I wanted to get some examples for questions in there, so you can read over that. And if you do have an idea for Bag Lab, feel free to email me. The email address is uh, in the description, and Danny's going to post it on the screen now also. That's my email address. So um, tonight's topic for Bag Lab came from Terry, and Terry says... Oh, hold on, hold on a second, Sarah. What are we oh. doing? Hold on. Three, two, one. It's time for Bag Lab. All right, uh, Terry... Well, hold on, Sarah. I... we got to do that again. What was the delay there? I didn't. I can't hear the sound, so I didn't know if There's, I should continue well, on or not. What the delay is, so you guys can know, is that we record this as a separate segment. So when I say to oh, do it over, <laughs> I forgot I'm about starting that. the recording of it. So okay, it's time for bag lab. All right. So tonight's bag lab question was from Terry, and Terry emailed me. She says, "Hi, Sarah. Hope you are doing well. I was wondering if you could demonstrate how to do darts correctly." Either they look like pointy boobs or, or there are gaps at the top of the dart. I know practice makes perfect, but I'm practicing how to do it wrong. Any help would be greatly appreciated. So Terry, we've got you covered. I'm going to discuss in my demonstration <clears throat> a quick way to sew darts um, and also two different ways with different ways to stitch them as well. So uh, enjoy the demonstration. Today we're going to be talking about darts and I'm using the free Oreo bag pattern and video, the pattern piece from that project, because it has a dart. I'm using that for this demonstration to show a few different methods for marking and assembling your darts and also stitching them, in particular, this pointed edge over here. So I went ahead, uh, before I proceed with the demonstration, I wanted to show you what the dart actually looks like in a finished bag. This is the Oreo bag and this front of the bag was that pattern piece that I was just sharing. These two stitched portions, this is what the assembled dart looks like. So depending on the pattern that you're working from, the dart might look slightly different, but in general they usually form some sort of uh, a triangle piece. Oftentimes the um, triangle ends um, at the top and these are called dart legs. The dart legs are what we'll be using for placing the fabric right sides together. So I went ahead and cut out my fabric and interfacing. I'm just using a quilting cotton and a foam interfacing for my example. So before I get into the two different methods for um, assembling the darts, um, I wanted to share with you um, and just uh, ignore these two markings for now. I just wanted to share with you how I would normally um, sew and prepare a dart just because I like to move through it a little bit quicker um, we'll be folding the fabric right sides together and I'm placing the two dart legs, which is this portion at the top, directly on top of each other. So I usually pin that part first and because the fabric, as you can see, it normally gets a bit bunched up underneath, I normally like to, to take my finger and drag it through, especially this portion over here where the dart, the two dart lines intersect. Make sure that's nice and smooth and place a few wonder clips, especially the wonder clip past this point over here. That one's super important for keeping everything smooth. So um, I'll pin everything and then I'll sew. Depending on the pattern that you're working with, you'll either be sewing directly on top of the line or you'll be sewing a quarter of an inch away from the line is, is us the usual seam allowance. So now that I've shown you this quick way to sew a dart, um, I wanted to talk through a couple different methods for securing the fabric a little bit better 
before stitching the dart and also removing this extra fabric ahead of time. So what I'm normally doing is I'm normally stitching the dart and then I'm trimming the seam allowance. We're going to trim the seam allowance first and then we're actually going to sew the dart for this particular example. So I'm going to talk through two different methods and I've marked them over here just so we can keep track while we're working through. So the dart on the left, I'm working with the basis of we're going to be stitching the dart on the line and the dart on the right, we're going to be sewing using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So that means we're going to be sewing a quarter of an inch away from the line. Those are the two different ways you'll generally see darts represented in a pattern, either stitching on the line or um, using a seam allowance. And this dart placement is from the dart that I cut out from my pattern piece and I just marked it on um, the wrong side of the fabric. So for this particular method first, we're going to be completing some top stitching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. I'm going to use a lengthened stitch length. So on my machine, that's four millimeters. And I'm going to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the line on the inside of the dart. So I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine now. Okay, so because we're going to be stitching directly on top of this purple line, that will leave us with um, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to take my ruler and with this green pen, I'm going to draw a line that is a quarter of an inch away from the purple line. And this method was actually posted a couple years ago by Iris in our So Sweetness Facebook group. Okay, so now because the fabric is secured with that top stitching, I'm gonna go ahead and cut on the green line. And again, this is only for the method where you're sewing the dart um, on the line from that pattern piece. So those pink stitches kind of help keep everything secure and nice and flat. And the reason that we're cutting this fabric away is to remove extra bulk while we're sewing. And because we measured this and we know that it's exactly a quarter of an inch away from the stitching line, we can actually just go ahead and place the fabrics right sides together. You want to make, especially make sure that that V is smoothed out. And all you need to do is actually place the fabrics right sides together. You don't need to fiddle with um, if my dart is on top of each other, if the two lines are on top of each other. We know they are because we already used our ruler to mark. So I'm going to use my Wonder Clips to hold everything in place. And because this is the example where we're sewing the dart on top of the line, we're going to do just that. We're going to sew on top of that purple line that we drew, which is what we transferred from the paper pattern piece. Okay, and I turned my stitch length back to my regular stitch length, and on my machine, that's two and a half millimeters. Okay, so this is what we just sewed here, and then from the right side of the fabric, when you kind of push that out, this is what the dart will look like. Okay, so for this second demonstration, I'm going to be working with assuming that the pattern instructions call for sewing a quarter of an inch or whatever the seam allowance is away from the dart line. So visually what that means is when the dart legs are lined up, you'll be sewing in this instance, a quarter of an inch away from the line that we used when we traced placement from the paper pattern piece, which is what this is right here. So, Assuming that we're using the quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to take my orange friction pen and I'm going to draw a quarter of an inch away from either end. This will be our stitching line and it's not necessary to actually draw stitching lines every time, but I find that at least for this demonstration, it's helpful to visually see what we're doing before we actually take it over to the sewing machine and stitch.
Okay, so I just lengthened both of those a little bit so that they come closer to meeting. And so what we're going to do here, and I'm going to mark in red, is because we'll be cutting away at our original line, because this is our stitching line, we're going to top stitch in between. So about an eighth of an inch away from either line. It doesn't matter, you choose. It'll be right down the middle. So I'm going to increase my stitch length to four millimeters for this top stitching, and I'm going to sew uh, an eighth of an inch away from uh, the purple line basically right down the middle. Okay, so because the orange line is the stitching line, we're going to be cutting away directly on top of the original line that we drew, which is marked in purple. And the old adage, uh, what is it, measure twice, cut once, so you want to be very sure that um, you have a handle on what you're cutting before you cut it. Okay, so because we marked the stitching line, it's very easy to go ahead and um, place the fabric right sides together again where the V is. You want to just make sure that that's nice and smooth first. And because we've been measuring as we go along, it'll be easy to just sew this quarter of an inch seam allowance, or because we have that drawn line, you can sew directly on top of the drawn line. Okay, so I've set my stitch length to my usual, which on my machine is two and a half millimeters. I'm going to show you a little bit of a different option for finishing um, the end uh, where the point meets. So in that first example, I just backstitched where I reached the end. For this example, about a quarter of an inch away from the end, basically where the fabric is folded, I'm going to stop, decrease my stitch length to about a half a millimeter, and then just sew that last quarter of an inch with that decreased stitch length. Um, this just gives you a different option if you prefer not to backstitch or if you feel like your machine doesn't give you good results when you've backstitched darts in the past. Okay, so I'm about a quarter of an inch away from the fold. I'm going to decrease my stitch length to about a quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to sew that last quarter of an inch. It goes very slowly. Just sew to the fold. Now I'm going to leave my presser foot down. I'm going to lift my needle. Now I'm going to lift the presser foot just maybe about a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to shift it back a little bit, and within the seam allowance, basically closer to the fold. I'm going to bring the needle down and then stitch that last little area. So this just gives you an option if you'd prefer not to backstitch, this kind of locks that stitch in place instead. Okay, so this is the one we just sewed and this is what it looks like from the right side of the fabric. As you can see, nice and smooth. This is the first one that we made, also nice and smooth. So this just gives you two different options, again, depending on what the pattern is using that you're working for, um, sewing directly on top of the dart line or sewing using a certain seam allowance. In this example, it was a quarter of an inch. So um, let me know if you've tried any of these for your darts and um, it's never a bad idea to practice. You can make a little um, prototype like I've done here with the Oriel bag template and um, practice your darts um, on some fabric or interfacing. All right, we're back. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. And while the demonstration was playing, I noticed a few questions coming in about the darts. So I wanted to answer those um, immediately following the demonstration. Elaine wanted to know, aren't you altering the size of the bag by increasing the depth of the dart by a quarter of an inch? That's a great question. So here's my original sample over here. This one's uh, the half that I sewed, sewing on top of the line for the dart. And this one is the one that I sewed using the quarter of an inch seam allowance. As you can see, this one's longer. So the reason I wanted to give the two different demonstrations, because some patterns will have in the instructions that you will sew, you are to sew on the line for the dart, and some patterns will have 
a different method for sewing using a certain seam allowance, say a quarter of an inch. So I wanted to demonstrate both of those, but you'll wanna follow your pattern instructions. I'm assuming you're working from a pattern just because drafting a pattern piece with darts is fairly complicated as far as pattern pieces go. So um, you'll wanna make sure you follow the instructions for the project that you're working on and then go with whatever um, technique that the instructions call for. But I wanted to demonstrate both of those just so that you would have um, your choice of whichever one um, as far as the instructions go that you're working from. Um, Julie says, do you normally cut away the bulk? I've never done that. So um, my very first part of the video was how I would quickly and normally sew darts, um, stitching the dart in place first and then trimming the seam allowance back. Um, the second majority part of the demonstration was me cutting away the seam allowance with the seam allowance intact, cutting away first and then stitching. So either will work. Your end result for them will be just about the same. Um, you're just about in all cases, you're not leaving that extra fabric. You're always cutting that away because then you have a huge bulky area in the finished bag. Mary says, I so love and appreciate you, Sarah and Danny, for your kind way of teaching and helping me understand you both are amazing and greatly appreciated. Um, so happy that you enjoyed that. And um, we really love what we do, um, definitely. Julie says, I always draw the stitching lines. It helps me sew good darts. Yeah, that's a great tip. And um, there's never a problem sewing your stitching lines, even if you're not sewing darts, even if you're sewing, say, uh, a zipper in place. Um, no worries about sewing the stitching line. And if it helps you, then um, it's a good thing. Linda says, <clears throat> when would you use the second method that you showed in Bag Lab? So kind of similar to Elaine's question, you'll want to reference your pattern instructions and go with the method that you're using, that they're using in the instructions. Um, Kathy says, I love learning. Seriously, I do great Bag Lab. I also love learning. Honestly, for stuff that's interesting to yourself, uh, as far as technology, I love learning about technology and different tools and unique applications and stuff like that. There's always something to learn about really anything so Joan says I'm guessing the pattern directions would say how to do the dart yes for sure um, Linda says I learned so much from your demos thank you for taking the time to help us thank you Linda all right so um, that concludes bag lab but we'll be, we'll be back again in two weeks with another bag lab so again instructions for bag lab submissions are in uh, the uh, description of the show um, and with that We'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments uh, that you're part of the So Sweetness Squad. We're so happy that you're here. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to tune in for our show. And we really, really appreciate it yeah, so totally. much. Yeah, totally. We really do a ton. <laughs> yep. All right. So in just a minute, I'm going to be answering questions live. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments. It can be a general sewing question, question about a notion or tool. Uh, bag making question go ahead and type that in the comments right now on Facebook or YouTube wherever you watch our show before we get over to the live questions I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and it looks like I neglected to on the live show um, last week live announced that winner so two weeks ago the winner was Stella no Stella Nova wears congratulations, congratulations. to you and then the winner of last week's giveaway was Katie Hooper. So congratulations to Katie. <clears throat> Both of you um, email me after the show. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and uh, I'll get you set up with your prizes. Would you mind popping that email on the screen one more time? Thank you. Yep, there's my email address. Uh, you can email me anytime. All right, I see Danny's been collecting some questions. Michelle has uh, more of a comment than a question. She said, just finished the chickadee backpack. I had a really difficult time with the top zipper that has the pocket for the metal frame. <clears throat> Thank goodness for your videos. They are super helpful. I'm so happy that the video was helpful. We really love making videos. I haven't really, besides, um, you know, this demonstration tonight, uh, haven't filmed a full length video in a really long time, but filming tonight's demonstration really reminded me like I super love doing it. So hopefully we'll get back to it soon. 
Um, Tamara says, do you think this would work for darts and garments? Um, it should. Um, I know I used foam interfacing for that demonstration, but in the case of the Oreo bag, the Oreo bag also has the same assembly for the lining. So <clears throat> generally the lining is um, the fabric plus ShapeFlex interfacing, which is thinner. So I don't see why it wouldn't work for garments. Obviously it would be somewhat easier because you don't have the bulk of the interfacings to deal with. <clears throat> Patty says, I have always cut out the dart fabric after the sewing dart. Is that incorrect? No, that's totally fine as well. I just wanted to give several options in the video. And um, the first part of the video was what I have done in the past, which is sew the dart first, and then you'll cut um, the seam allowance after. So either will work. <clears throat> Debbie says, why do fold zipper tape ends at a 90 degree angle? That's a really great question. So some patterns, which let me see if I have one behind me. <clears throat> the, the, chickadee. the chickadee backpack is a good example, which that's what I have right here. So let's see if I can show this so it shows up on screen. So, so one end of the backpack with the zipper on top has sort of a tail. And the other end does not have a tail. So the zippers on this end are sewn at a 90 degree angle so that you don't have the raw edges of the zipper tape showing sort of. Let me see if I can hold that up closer if the camera will pick it up. Yeah, see that that's the zippers at the 90 degree angle. So they're basically just folded in so they can be caught in the seam allowance. Um, it depends on the pattern, but yeah, I do have a, a, a good amount of patterns where I have that zipper tape folded back. Just uh, It's just a way of finishing one of the ends of the zipper um, rather than the zipper tail on both ends. <clears throat> Elaine says, what glue do you use to glue the plastic tips into the metal frame? So that's a great question. Um, Beacon makes a couple really great products. Um, Beacon 3-in-1 is one I have used in the past. And um, another one that's great, especially for pro projects with fabric, is Beacon Fabric Tech, which we actually just started carrying in the shop. Um, so you can find that on my website, sosweetness.com. It should be in the What's New section of the page since, since we just got it in a few days ago. Um, again, it's called Beacon Fabric Tech. And you just want to put a little dab of glue in the rubber tips before you insert the metal frames. And you can use it for other things as well, such as if you're making a coin purse with a metal frame at the top and the frame gets glued into your fabric, the Beacon Fabric Tack is great for that as well. And the reason that I like it is it's not as runny as some of the other glues that I've tried, which, um, as you can imagine, might be a problem for projects, especially when you're gluing in a metal coin purse frame, you certainly don't want the glue to be runny and drip down your fabric. Um, it's a little bit more, it's thicker. Um, the viscosity. Thank you. That's the word. Um, and again, that's made by Beacon. <clears throat> you know, I think too, we, um, I don't know if anyone's mentioned this, but like a hot glue gun <clears throat> could be a it's, great tool. It's similar to what comes out of a hot glue gun. Obviously it's not hot, but yeah. Um, Barbara says, can we make the Pinto Stadium bag in all fabric for the March challenge? Yes, you sure can. So the March challenge is either to make the Pinto Stadium bag from Minikin Season 3 or to make any So Sweetness project with repurposed fabric, such as the Park Sling backpack that Danny chose earlier made from the Irish dancing dress. Um, you could make a pouch with repurposed men's ties. Um, you can use a pair of old blue jeans to make a bag. So um, that's the second portion of the March challenge. And um, for the Pinto Stadium bag, you can make it out of fabric instead of the clear vinyl if you would prefer. Terry says, what's your favorite quilting writing patterns or sewing a bag? Writing patterns far and away is my favorite. Um, if I could do that every single day, like it wouldn't be a bad day. Um, I would say in the order would probably be writing patterns, sewing a bag for a pattern, or quilting. Um, that, that would be my priority list, I guess. <laughs> Misty says, where do you find your awesome quilt alongs? Um, 
I follow a lot of quilt shops uh, via email newsletter. Um, I'm also on Instagram and I follow as best I can either other quilt shops or other quilt pattern designers. And I just, um, yeah, those are probably my two main, uh, word of mouth is probably my third uh, for finding quilt, uh, good quilt alongs. <clears throat> Brenda says, I know you sometimes use staples for bags before sewing. Have you ever used or heard of micro stitch? I've seen you demo it, but I don't think I've ever seen you use staples. Um, I don't regularly do that just because, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know of a good reason. Um, I have not heard of micro stitch though, so I'll have to check that out after the show. It sounds very interesting. Hmm. Now I'm wondering what it is. <laughs> <clears throat> Debbie says, I made the Kennedy bag, which looks great, but I put the rivet in the wrong place. How do I remove it? Um, I did a couple of videos on Social Sunday, and I think I separated at least one out in a separate video. Um, how to use the rivet removal tool. Um, you can type that in the search box on the So Sweetness YouTube channel, or it's also on my website. And I also used a tool, um, cutters from Tandy Leather, um, to cut the rivets out. Um, out of the two methods, I do like the rivet removal tool a lot better for ease of use, um, but maybe that's personal preference. But you can find both of those videos uh, on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> Anita says, will you do a small cell phone crossbody bag? I think, maybe it wasn't you, Anita, but I think I saw either a question or an email recently about this. So I wasn't sure if you were looking for a bag that only holds a cell phone, just sort of a pouch, or let me know if you have specifics in mind. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure about that, or if you wanted other things combined, sort of like the day trip cell phone wallet where it holds a cell phone, but it's also a wallet. <clears throat> Rita says, I'm making a widget bag and want to use vinyl. Would you suggest a change in interfacing and foam? I would probably, there's sort of a, a front panel on the widget with, um, I forget the proper name of the pattern piece for that piece, but it's basically a strip of fabric that goes um, around the front pocket portion or the front panel portion. I'd probably suggest not using interfacing for that part just because it's a really thin strip and I could imagine it getting bulky. Um, off the top of my head, that's the, the one major modification I would make. Diana says, Danny, thanks for changing the zipper order for me. I was able to get my project finished. Yep, no problem. <clears throat> Anne says, Sarah, where did you learn to sew? Was there someone to teach you or did you take classes? Great job in showing how to do darts. Um, my mom taught me and my friend Amy in the third grade um, to make two sewing projects, a knit t-shirt and uh, a knit drawstring bag. And then I didn't sew again for many years until right before we had William. So William's 15 now. Um, I just needed a hobby to sew. I feel like for me personally, I don't know if it's the same case for you, but everything that I was interested in as a child and a teenager circles back for me now so when i was a kid i loved horses i always read horse books um i came back to riding a handful of years ago when i was in high school um, my first dog an australian shepherd we went to we were part of an obedience club so we went to weekly training classes for a few years we did uh, a couple of like practice shows they're called fun matches we did some of those for obedience and now our new puppy, we're signed up at the same obedience club that I was part of as a teenager, which is really, really fun and crazy. Um, reading books. As a child, I was constantly reading books. And high school and college, I sort of stepped away from that. But now I'm back to reading books a lot. So like everything cycles back, I guess, kind of like fashion, like uh, all the styles come back eventually. <laughs> Tracy says, is new interfacing coming in soon? So <clears throat> I haven't decided yet about carrying interfacing as a full range, but we've picked up a couple of interfacings that might be harder to find, such as fusible buckram and fusible um, non-woven interfacing. So we started out with those two in the shop and we'll see how it goes. I know there's a lot of places you can 
purchase interfacings already, so I wasn't sure if there was a need for one more place to stock interfacing, but um, I guess I'll have a think through on that. Um, a micro stitch is like the gun clothing stores use to attach price tags to clothing. Oh, okay, that would work as well. Um, if you'd like to use that instead of the staples within your seam allowance, um, yes, then the micro stitch would work for that also. Um, Sue said, looked up micro stitch. It looks like a glue gun, but it uses fasteners. Oh, awesome, awesome. Rob says, can the puppy guest star in a social Sunday? Uh, he's probably sleeping in the room with the kids right now. The kids are not sleeping this early, but they're keeping him corralled while we have the show. But maybe on a future show, we can have it uh, ready beforehand and practice so that... Uh, it's go off the cuff. Not, it's not a disaster when you bring him on set. Um, Julie says, any tips on sewing with nylon? Um, I'm not sure if you're using ripstop nylon or another type of fabric. Uh, feel free to email me after the show, though, if you have a specific uh, substrate that you're, you're looking for tips working with. Debbie says, when did you first become crafty? I feel like... As a child, I was always doing something. My mom had a lot of rubber stamps when I was a kid. We were, I remember always stamping and making bookmarks and like coloring them in and uh, drawing, coloring. Uh, in college, I took a lot of art classes, so always something or other. Um, Carrie says the challenge has to do with the Facebook group. I can't use Facebook. How can I join without Facebook? Um, so the monthly challenge is always posted on my blog. So you can go to sosweetness.com backslash blog and then just scroll down, might be a couple posts down, but you wanna look for the post that says March challenge and you just click on that and that should come up. And we always also post the monthly challenges in the newsletter. So if you're not already a subscriber, you can subscribe. Um, sosweetness.com backslash newsletter is uh, where you can go to subscribe to the newsletter if you are not already subscribed. Um, oh, I'll hit that back. Oh, yes. Uh, I think I saw the question. Tracy wanted to know, is the Pelon PLF 36 coming back soon? Yes, we have some more on the way, so it should be in stock hopefully this week. Cindy says, how can you fix a Chicago screw if you make the hole too big? Um, that's a good question. How about like a clothing patch for like a knee? Yeah, probably. Like put that in the spot then re make a new hole? Get a dark color one? Yeah, I wonder if... It? I wonder if, depending on how big the hole is, I wonder if the patch could even, um, like you wouldn't see the, once you replace the Chicago screw, I wonder, enough, right? yeah, it might, it might cover it too. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, Janet says, thank you, Sarah and Danny, for sending my order so fast and having such fantastic customer service. I'm glad it arrived to you quickly. I know uh, we don't necessarily, we can't control the speed of the post office, but it's always good when it works in our favor. Yeah, I would say like it's 99% really good. Sometimes there's that 1%. It's like, gosh, what happened with this order? It like, traveled all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, Laura says, what size Chicago screws should I use for the tabs on the Starling bag? Um, it might depend on the thickness, the, the combination of fabrics you used. Um, the common sizes that I've seen are a quarter of an inch and three-eighths of an inch. Um, you might be okay to try the quarter of an inch first. Um, but if you're using very thick fabric, um, you might need to move up to the three-eighths of an inch. Sharon says, I was also wondering if you have a pattern for a small pet carrier. Um, I only have one pattern for a pet carrier. Um, it's called the Best Friend Pet Carrier. Um, it's a pattern and video you can find on my website. Um, like I said, it's just the one size, but I have also put, you know, besides a dog, I've also put uh, my bearded dragon in it. So bearded dragon's kind of on the small side, I would say. <laughs> Terry says, maybe do a bag live video of the dog so he's on the live, but not really. That's a good idea. Cindy says, I am an obedience judge for shows. What dog club are you training at? <clears throat> it's called um, Northwest Obedience Club. Uh, we live in Illinois, so hang on one second. <clears throat> so when I was in high school, which was over 20 years ago, gosh. It's crazy, right? <laughs> it hurts saying that out loud. Um, it used to be located in Palatine, Illinois, and now it's currently located in Crystal Lake. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a lot of years, so I'm curious to see what it looks like now. <laughs> Charlie says, how did you make out with your houseplant explorations? Did you find you enjoy it? I do enjoy having houseplants, but certain ones did better for me than others. The money plants and the ZZ plant 
and the hedgehog aloe probably did the best out of all of the ones. Um, there's a few that are doing okay, and I think I lost like one or two houseplants, but I've had them for, I started about three years ago, so I feel like that's pretty good. Kathleen said, I live in Hawaii, and I'm always impressed at how quickly my orders get to me. Well, that's awesome, because yeah, that Monica, is a long way to go. That's super far. <laughs> we do have, you know, Aloha, if that would be applicable, uh, but uh, Alaska as well. We have a few customers in Alaska and Hawaii, and that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Maria says, ordered cork for me to make my first cork bag. Awesome. I love working with cork. Beyond thrilled with how fast it arrived and the quality is amazing. I'm so happy that you're happy with it. Um, any recommendations on a machine that will go over those super thick seams and strap folding? I break needles and it's scary going over those thick places. I, yeah, I totally agree. It's always scary when needles are breaking while you're sewing. Um, I have now three Jukies. They're basically the same machine with minor modifications on each one. You can check out my reviews about my Jukies by going to my So Sweetness YouTube channel in the search box. You can just type in Juki. <clears throat> mm. This is a good one. Thank you, Jesse. Jesse says, use leather on both sides of Chicago screws, kind of like a washer. That's a great idea, and I can see them being really um, secure with that. <clears throat> Sarah, tower bag, how can I see, um, okay, how can I sew without the top panel? So if you would like to have your exterior fabric without that accent on the top, just leave it off. Um, it's not necessary to the construction um, of the exterior, just basically placing it on top. <clears throat> oh, thanks for the reminder. Do you have any plans to include the crimps for the cork bag straps? They can't ship for a couple of months from overseas. I actually <laughs> got them in probably over a week ago and I have uh, forgotten where I put them to take photos. So I think they might be under on my ironing board underneath all the stuff that I put on top of it today. So I'll try to get those uh, photographed tomorrow and up on the website, but we do have them. Again, they're crimps for the cork, um, the cork cord that we sell on our website. <clears throat> we got that one already. That's the top panel? Mm hmm That's odd because it was after this one. <clears throat> maybe it was asked twice. Oh, it could be. Maybe, maybe. Let's see. Barbara says... Okay. When joining fabric strips for straps, should we interface before or after we join the, the strips? That's a great question. So... If you have the option of the two, I would prefer to attach the interfacing afterwards just so you don't have the interfacing in the seam allowance. The interfacing is just, that way you can cut just a single piece of interfacing the entire length of the strap. Um, and if you would like information how to make um, either a cork strap or any strap longer, you can find that video on my YouTube channel. Um, I think in the search box you can type cork strap longer and I think that video should come up. Elaine says Juki will end your issues related to sewing thick seams places on bags. I learned this just in the last two months, bought my Juki TL18 QVP and plan to replace all my machines with Juki. Well that's really great feedback. That's um, one of the machines, the newest Juki that I have. Um, it's really great. It has the new micro lifter feature which, which is especially great for sewing seams where you have a thickness such as if you're top stitching the top edge of the bag and you have the two side seams, the two side seams area will be thicker compared to the rest of the top stitching area, so the micro lifter really helps with that. And if you couldn't get to any of your questions, you can always email sarah at mm -hmm. sewsweetness.com, and that'll be it. All right, I apologize if I did not get your, get your question live, but uh, I will be back again next Sunday with my show where I have the notion of the week, book review, new fabrics, all of that. That will be next Sunday on the show. So one last thing is the giveaway. So um, the giveaway is randomly drawn. You have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show, either on Facebook or YouTube, wherever you watch. We com combine all the comments and um, I randomly draw a winner. I'll announce it on next Sunday's show. And I have an extra question for you, which you can answer in the comments. Um, before that, I probably should show you the prize. Um, I have um, a big stack of sewing, quilting, craft books. A lot of these I've reviewed on past Social Sunday shows and um, such as 
this one over here. So all of those will go to one lucky winner. My extra question for you, which you can answer in the comments right now is, what is your favorite novel? Let me know in the comments. Um, my favorite, my favorite is always the last book I read most likely, but over the years, my most favorite novel is probably The Time Traveler's Wife. It's a great book and also the author is um, from Chicago, which is where we're from. Do you have uh, favorite single I, I, Or a series, if a seri you would prefer. Uh, speaking of Chicago, um, Dresden Files mm. is a great from Jim Butcher and Mistborn from... Let's speak on this for real fast. Did you see the um, Brandon Sanderson mm -hmm. about... He did his own self-publishing through Kickstarter. Say his name one more time. Just Brandon please. Sanderson. He's a, an author that I love. He finished a, a few novels. Are they all fantasy books that he writes? Or? Uh, I'm pretty sure they are. <clears throat> and he did a self-publish on Kickstarter, Kickstarter, and I think he hit over $30 million for four books. That's, that's amazing. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amazing, but awesome author. Definitely check him out if you like to read fantasy books. Is the books. Kickstarter still open, you think? Or? I believe it is. Okay. Yeah, but awesome wow. story. And talk about... All the funding going directly to the artist or author. Like, oh, right. It's not going to his publisher. like Or agent. Right. It's all going to him. And obviously he has a team, yep. you know, working. And he's got like swag boxes and different things. Yeah. He wanted something to challenge his team. And that's what he's doing. And it's amazing his results. He's a very nice guy. He's on YouTube. He live streams. He answers questions. He would actually go to airports when he travels and sign books at every airport bookstore. Really? Yeah. He's an awesome wow, dude. That's, really nice that's guy. That's really cool. Um, yeah. Okay. You guys have a great weekend. Well, I guess what's left of it. Uh, happy sewing, everybody. Bye-bye.